We've been telling the world and the politicians since decades what's going on. And we know, I mean, we see it, we've documented it. The world is warming, the oceans are acidifying. And so as a scientist, you feel powerless. You feel like what you say doesn't matter. That's why I decided to go from knowledge to action. Because if we don't do it, who's going to do it? SeaCoast team is uniquely placed to challenge these problems that we're facing. They know how the oceans operate, they know what the seabeds are like, they know the technical challenges um, that are faced with uh, an engineering task like this. We're here in St Vincent to uh, test our barriers that will create some of the infrastructure around our farms. It's a free floating barrier, so it's uh, meant to be working offshore, driven by the current so it's not anchored on the sea ground. So we really need to get a structure done that's uh, staying open or staying with the sargasm without harming it. It uses sea anchors um, and it uses uh, these sort of flexible barriers that are sort of stiffened by fiberglass. Um, and inside we can contain the sargasm and we can test it to find out whether it's happily existing within, within that barrier structure. Bueno, todo empezó eh, en el 2015, eh, vino un arribazón de sargazo que inundó todas las playas de, de Quintana Roo. Y el sargazo, al llegar a la playa, lo que pasa es que empieza a degradarse. Cuatro días después se empieza a degradar y esta degradación hace que en la costa, en la línea de costa, el oxígeno disuelto disminuya Los peces no tengan oxígeno disuelto, los pastos marinos no tengan oxígeno disuelto para poder hacer su metabolismo y va causando mortalidad en este ecosistema. But then you have the other side of the coin that it is an amazing seaweed, that is an amazing habitat out in the ocean and also an amazing resource for a lot of products. There is a solution to it and there is a way to turn it from a problem into an opportunity. St. Vincent, land of um, the Blessed, it um, lies 26 miles southeast of St. Lucia. I myself, you know, meddle with the ocean from day to day. There's a few species of fishes that um, they're not visible to me. They are either um, extinct or vanish to maybe deeper waters. The open ocean is the last frontier we have to conquer. And so creating structures that are upscalable and that can deal with harsh conditions in the open ocean will definitely be a challenge to monitor vast areas of the ocean, both at the surface and at the deep sea. We used the drone to get the buffed barrier. So we, you can see the area of the Sargasm inside and we can see the direction and the barrier is opening. We can actually see how the barrier is forming in different conditions. Sargasm is a problem in the Caribbean, but also an opportunity. If we can domesticate it, we can remove CO2 from the atmosphere and also replace many products that are still being made from fossil fuels. The work we're doing here in St. Vincent then becomes a blueprint for local communities to commercialize sargassum, but it also allows seafields to develop methods to contain and cultivate it in the open ocean. Okay, so in these big ones, here we take samples for nutrients to see how much nitrate, phosphate, etc. is in the, in the water. So the nutrients that are actually feeding the, the sargassum. And in this case here, we don't have any artificially added nutrients, it's just the natural nutrients that are in the water. So for us, it's really important that the farms are free-floating, that they're modular, and that they're infinitely scalable. And so we're out here at the moment trying to ascertain whether we can achieve those things. No one so far has managed to actually grow sargassum in the open ocean. No one's managed to domesticate it. And ultimately, that's what we're attempting to do at Seafield. Ready? Stay safe. Get it up there, get it up there. 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 Get it up there
The team that we put together is a unique mix of scientists, environmental engineers, and then also local people who are used to working on boats, who are sailors. The most devastating effect from climate change that I've witnessed personally is definitely the, the huge loss of marine diversity around our coastline. A reaction to climate change. I wouldn't want to live in a world without whales and dolphins. I actually didn't want to have kids for a long time because I thought, why put someone else on this planet while we're going towards catastrophe? But then I thought, well, as a marine biologist and knowing the ocean, I thought the ocean is so vast and there's a huge diversity of organisms there. There must be something in there that can help us tackle climate change. And that's why I got a bit of hope and then became a mother. And now I'm actually trying to find those solutions in the ocean for my kids, for future generations.